Here is Bob. He owns a business. Bob had his uncle's cousin's nephew build him a website. Unfortunately, that website looks like a website that was built in Bob's uncle's cousin's mom's basement. Don't be like Bob. Let a professional build your website. If you want an affordable website that looks expensive and a website that can be found by your customers, visit don'tbelikebob.com and let them know you heard about them on this show to get 10% off. Sioux Empire Podcast 138 Snow Jam Comedy Festival pre-show with who? Comedian Spencer Thompson. A pathless wilderness, wild, rugged, that was South Dakota. A hardy frontier, far from the paths of civilization. Why die on Mars when you can live in South Dakota? Where fortune beckoned with a glittering smile. I was hauling pigs on the interstate. You were in a red car having a problem with your shirt. And life hung on the quickness of a trigger finger. Podcast Palooza. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. You're going to say something. The Sioux Empire Podcast. Welcome to another fantastic episode of the Sioux Empire Podcast. This is the Sioux Empire Podcast, the quirky but harmless podcast that's all about Sioux Empire news, comedy, music, and culture. I am your host, Robert Mailing. Joining me, as always, is co-host Seth to the Glover. I started out the day like any other on the frozen tundra above the carcass of a dead animal. You know, like you do here in South Dakota. That's a typical mm-hmm. commute. Mm -hmm. Uh, And also joining us, this gentleman here, is uh, comedian Spencer Dobson. Welcome back to the show. Morning, Robert. I've had a carcass-free morning, to be honest with you. Well, something's missing out. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you have for breakfast, then? I mean... Uh, Eggs. Uh, for, uh, yeah, don't don't go vegan on me. Don't okay. don't don't turn it into it. But yeah, uh, there there was part of a dead animal, sure, but it wasn't uh, sure. You didn't to to drive say the least, I did drive here. There was a lot of dead. Uh, I don't hunt. I think they're quail. They might be turkeys. Could be. <laughs> I have no idea. There's a lot of birds out there, and a lot of them are dead now. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. But it's a nice change from the deer. I saw zero dead deer this trip because well, somebody came along in South Dakota and shot them all. Yep, that's that's an upgrade. Uh, except the ones around our far place. I've, I've been posting photos online because they're doing the swarms of hundreds of deer come down out of the hills and stuff and attack the corn pile. Okay. So, yeah, it's great for photography, not great for, uh, I'm sure, my dad's corn pile. And Probably not. That, so. Yeah, I've heard them described as the rats of uh, the forest or something like Pretty that. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and with that... <laughs> Not how I remember Bambi, but... <laughs> Festering with diseases. <laughs> right. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into our first segment uh, okay. here. Seth Glover's It's Game Time. Hey everybody, welcome to It's Game Time with Seth Glover. Uh, this week, I'm going to be talking about otherwise known as Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, so, I'm going to be basically be telling you what you already know. Uh, Red Dead Redemption is the bomb. It's absolutely worth it. And I hear it's on sale right now, so you'd be silly what? not to get it. Hmm. Um... But I mean, it is just a, it's a it's a re- it's a rock star game. So if you grew up and you were playing the uh, GTA's, you know, San Andreas, this has a uh, there's a you know, it's the same company made it, and I love San Andreas, and there's a lot of parallels. Uh, the maps are you know almost identical how they have that layout, which they got that right the first time, so it's great that they still do it like that. Um, um, it's so yeah. There's there's a lot of similarities between you know and Rockstar basically just knows how to make a good game from you know uh, the Grand Theft Auto series to this. I I didn't play the first Red Dead Redemption, uh, forgive me. But after playing uh, most of the way through, I'm at seventy five percent. Yes, apologies. Uh, I'm at 75% completion through the main story on, on Red Dead currently, 
uh, and you definitely didn't need to play the first game to know what's going on. Um, it's still got a really deep, uh, you know, uh, powerful story that uh, really captivates you and makes you care about the characters, and they really throw you for some loops in this one. Um, it's, it, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's, I'm at the point where it just completely changed on me, and, like, so another part about why this is a good game is its length. It's not a short game, thankfully, um, but to do that, uh, games kind of have to give you some menial uh, tri you know, trials, basically. How's the fishing going? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Actually, though, before I got shuffled into this menial, you know, farmhand shit, like seriously putting up, <laughs> putting up fence and stuff. I'm like, I dig it. All right, it's okay. All right, you guys are making it longer. You're building the story. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Let, let's pretend I've never played this game. What do I get for building a fence or for fishing? For fishing, you uh, so the ultimate result or the 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 uh, ultimate gift or, or bounty of fishing mm -hmm. is that you have a like five minute fucking spin fest with your controller. Where basically, I mean, you, you're just... The fish is either a legendary and, like, it takes you five minutes to reel it in because it's right. just fighting that hard. Or it's just a guppy and it's, like, just reels right in. But then do I get to eat the fish and have more strength? Do I need to accumulate... Like, like in, in GTA, I'm, I'm punching hookers so I can get money from them so that I can buy guns. That's... A, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, there Which are... carries over into life. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's... It's, uh... But no, so you can sell your legendary uh, fish. Uh, it's kind of a side quest to get all legendary fish and send it off to one guy. Or you can just sell it uh, to a trapper uh -huh. um, who can make fancy shit out of uh -huh. your dead animals if you sell those dead animals to him. Cool. Um, so you kind of have to uh, decide where you're going to like uh, invest your uh, game, basically, because... You can hunt legendary, you know, uh, bison, legendary grizzlies, legendary animals, and legendary fish, you know, um, and either give them to your camp, or you can, you know, sell them to this trapper dude who will eventually, once you get enough animals and of the quality that's necessary, he'll make you this really badass outfit, which, you know, I mean... I don't play games for the badass outfits, but the hunting, but. but the hunting is cool enough that I'll I'll go and waste you know eight hours of a day just hunting virtually, and like hey this is the warmest I've ever been hunting in South Dakota. No oh, shit. <laughs> like, and is yeah. there a lot of like uh, gunfights and do you rob banks? I, I I don't know what the game is about. I mean I get it's an old west game, so I assume there's stagecoaches and. Yeah, so it's basically GTA, but there's no cars and there's no semi or there's no automatic horses weapons. Horses are effectively the cars. Horses right. are the cars. It's yeah. Grand Theft Horse, as people mm. call it. Basically, yeah. And is is it like the last Grand Theft Auto where you've got this online world too that you interact with? So I haven't played any of the online uh, version of this. I okay. uh, listened to someone else who had played it, and they said uh, the. You know, the shittiest result happened to them that the first player they encountered just shot them until they died. Even with, so Red Dead Redemption, they, uh, the, or, uh, they do a thing where if you don't engage in the other person, it substantially reduces the amount of damage that they can do. Although it, they still do damage, so it just takes them, it's like really in a legendary fish, basically. You just have to spend ten minutes shooting at a person who's, you know not defending themselves uh, okay. rather than possibly, you know, and if you guys do engage in each other, then it's, you know, uh, uh, game on bitches, you know, full, full contact and shit. One thing, um, as somebody who hasn't played this yet, I've been hearing a lot about the realism of the game as far as factor, mm -hmm. like survival game factors, like the whole... Uh, I mean, this isn't survival, but you have to shave regularly or your facial hair, like, grows in. Uh, you, like, reaction to, like, temperature and stuff like that, like how your body performs and, like, what you eat and stuff. So it's, like, basically 
it's like a hardcore mode where basically it's like you've got to get food and eat it. You've got to like shave. You drink coffee in the morning because it gives you a slight like bonus of stimulus and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think it started. I think it started in San Andreas because I know that was when you started eating. Because I don't think that was in Grand Theft Auto Three. Um, but uh, so yeah, they started doing it there, but. This one, yeah, they basically perfected it because there are some areas in the map where you can't go if you don't have the right uh, gear, you know, the right winter wear with you, um, which it's really easy to get the, you know, clothing, so it's it's not that hard to, you know, uh, circumvent that. Um, then it gives you statistics on, like, do you overeat? Are you skinny? Are you, you know, normal? And then you can also get diseases. I got TB. Wow. I got TB. You got TB? Yeah. How do you get over it, or don't you? I was going to say, you don't. It, let's see, it says America, 1899, <laughs> so you don't. <laughs> yeah, wow. No. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a, uh, there's, it's completely up, up to your actions that caused my um, uh, sickness, which is crazy, but yeah, there's, there's this one side mission where if you punch this dude... You walk away from it with a, uh, you know, uh, less honor points. I don't know what the opposite, but yeah. Um. So, uh, go, going back a couple of things. So if you let your facial hair grow, can you grow like different beards? Do you have shaving options? Or, or and does it ever get to the point where like, oh, I, I was trying to run, but I forgot to shave. So I stepped on my beard. And now the fish are all lost. Or I'm trying to piece together. It doesn't the story. get to like end of the movie, uh, like lo- or um, the one with Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah, lo- uh, t- stranded, whatever it's Cast called. Castaway. 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 There yeah, you it's go. not like him at the end. Right. But it's it's a little bit like halfway in, into the movie. Right. Of, of uh, facial hair, and then um, they do have barbers where you can. Um, you can't get too fanciful with it, but they do allow you to uh, choose between some some different uh, hairstyles. It's See, not it's like eighteen ninety, so mutton chops would better be like yeah, an option. they're on the list. Oh okay, yeah, good. oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and yeah, like we were saying in the old west, um, it's yeah, the story moves more. So in between, you know, when there's not the menial. Um, trials or, or uh, what have you <laughs> um, there, there's a hell of a lot of gunfights like you basically kill everybody in towns and you're like how the fuck can I play this game anymore I'm mm. wanted dead or alive here like I, I didn't even want to do this but I was forced to do this and now the entire town is you know on lockdown mm. um, so there's a lot of that and um, you can pay off bounties so you can, you know, if you don't pay off the bounty, you run the risk of just a, you know, coming across a uh, 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 patrol of bounty hunters. Um, as with most Rockstar games, the whole money system is basically you have all the monies or you have none's the monies. <laughs> um, like in the beginning, you have to get like... I, you know, get a fifteen dollar horse, and then by the time you know you're making enough money, it's like you buy a nine hundred dollar horse, and you still have enough for all the ammunition in the town and mm-hmm. all the all the brothel ladies. I mm-hmm. think that's what they like to be called. Brothel um, ladies. Brothel ladies. Yes, uh, not to be confused with broth ladies. Um, broth ladies are like lunch ladies, right? Soup ladies. They make yeah. soup. Yeah. No soup for you. If you right. think it's a brothel. Right. Is ladies a, a PC term at this point? I don't even know anymore. I don't think we can say it, honestly. I, I, <laughs> now that you say it. Now that, that I've said it out loud. This, judgment. This is why we're going to lose our jobs in 20 years. Is that he said ladies on a it's podcast. Ladies? You can't say ladies. You need to refer to them as humanoids with two uh, X chromosomes. That's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Um, so anyway, hot like the uh, barrel of my gun uh, in <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, almost went into a Cosby voice. I don't know why. And again, that one's Which gone wrong too. again, I'm fired in 20 years. Well. <laughs> Who knew? Oh boy. Ooh Who boy. knew? Huh. Some people did. I didn't. Um, <laughs> um, uh, 
And uh, so Red Dead Redemption. It also and Bill Cosby works. is not in Red Dead Redemption at He's all? not in. They didn't use his voice in this one or anything. But there's brothel ladies. Is it full of cool voice work, though? Because I know one That's of the great things about Grand Theft Auto was like, that is David Cross. You, you damn Et straight. You damn straight. Yeah, the, the voice acting is on point, and like, they clearly got talented people to do all of the voices. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, everybody has a deep, like, voice that tells a little bit something about that character um yeah details like that in this game definitely make it uh, a lot of fun Mm. um definitely worth it there's one realism detail i must confirm with someone who's actually played the game when it's cold out do you know what i'm gonna ask no you haven't been following this okay when it first released this was thing people were like really really geeking out about on like twitch and stuff like that when you take your horses into a cold climate, their testicles, it's so real, their testicles will draw up inside of them when you go through like a cold environment. How do you get to the close-up horse testicle angle? Oh, on a Twitch that you just get off the horse and and get your character and go look at horse testicles up close. Okie dokie. I've not played that side mission. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, someday... There were, just, there were a lot of memes about it when it first... Uh, first came out and uh this parody video i'm gonna play for you guys later even mentions the all the work that went into it the technician that was in charge of that (laughs) wow yeah i don't know about the horse nuts but you do help this one one one-legged man and he dies later though oh yeah did um so somebody that was like an easter egg though right they didn't. It's not on the package. Like, and be sure to check out the horse <laughs> nuts. It's that somebody got off their horse and went. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see how these nuts are reacting well, to this this <laughs> temperature. Pe- like people knew. Like the day it came out, there were like three different videos, or there were more than. Oh, were, really? Like, a holy shitload of people talking about it. It was like the only like I didn't like. I bet somebody at Rockstar game. went. You know what you got to do? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check out that horse's nuts. It, it was, it was brilliant because the it was like it was a brilliant marketing campaign because it got them everywhere. Because people were like, "What?" Yeah, because it's right up there with the whole shaving thing and just like mm-hmm. crazy. Uh, hot coffee. Hot coffee. Hot. What? What is that? Is that in the game? That's a reference to uh, San Andreas. There's mm. this uh, um, Easter egg uh, that they called hot coffee, where you're fucking a lady, mm-hmm. and they. They're, they being there was the media hearings about had a it. real big problem. Oh. oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, the whole country had an uproar about hot, hot coffee. Hillary Clinton. Well, what, what was Clinton the part was about the, the hot coffee that? I mean, wh- how was hot coffee involved in it? Because I know where you could like fuck ladies in cars, and then they, uh, and then you either pay them or you don't. Oh this no, this one you this, saw it. Th- basically, if you're walking through a particular neighborhood in San Andreas, there's uh. a woman out on the front step who's just like. Basically, if you engage dialogue with her, she'll say something about, you want some hot coffee or something like oh, that. okay. And then if you go in there with her, basically it unlocks a mini game where you, like, it's a sex mini game. Oh, wow. Yeah. I missed that. Yeah. And I was going to ask forgot. you if there was a lot of, because San Andreas had the big cheat sheet where you could get, like, the latex suit and you could do dildo fights and you can the do, monster all, truck. and there was a, a uh, the monster truck, the jetpack. Jet pack. All kinds of great stuff. Jet plane. Is that is that in this game too, or or is it not out yet? Or you know, I guess I'm not a cheating little le- bastard like I used to be because I haven't even looked. Right. Well, I suppose it's still. You don't want to do the cheat until you've already finished the game, <coughs> and then go back and be like, oh, I can go through this with, and with shoot everybody pack. with clown heads or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I'm not that much of a purist. I like to dominate. And <laughs> I don't really care how it's. Me too, I'm such a cheater. Ill or not. Um, That's why I love yeah. Civilization, because the very like first few seconds of a game, you could just flip a switch and it's like, do you want to go into cheat mode? Okay. And so instead of codes, it's literally just, would you like to drop 5,000 tanks to defend your medieval city? <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. Just like instantly. It's just like, the, but once you do that, then you're not eligible for like the scoreboard and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But it's just like, pff, who cares? Right. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I, want, I want my tank in medieval times, damn it. <laughs> Right, right. I haven't actually looked, um, but I have started uh, trying or, or looking up online the locations of 
uh, the dinosaur bones that you're supposed to find. Okay. And there's also... Uh, what happens when you find... How do you, First of all, how do you know that there's dinosaur bones? Second of all, what happens when you find them? So first you have to uh, come across this woman at this uh, train station, I believe, is where you meet her. Okay. And she's a paleontologist. Okay. Um, and she just asks you to send her the location through mail. Okay. So anytime you come across a bone, which it looks, you know, different... Uh, than the ground around it, you walk up to it, you know, push the button, and then you have to go to the uh, post office mm -hmm. and actually send that out. And yeah, oddly enough, you send the, you have to put the legendary fish on the back of your horse, but you can send it through the mail just fine. So I guess it's the <laughs> that's point. a weird sentence. First of all, you have to put the legendary fish on the back of your horse, but <laughs> you can send it through the mail. <laughs> Does that, that sounds like the instructions for how to assemble my new desk that came from China. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. It's sort of like that, yeah. It, it was, uh, I was... Wait I was a minute, kinda... what kind of mushrooms are these? <laughs> <laughs> Shiitake, oh. or... Okay. But, um... Uh... So, get, get a thumbs up, like the game? Two thumbs up, for Whoa. sure. Get it. Um, damn it, I was going to come up with a cool thing like that whole tune in, drop out, and whatever, mm -hmm. but have it like plug in. That's as far You'll as I got. It. Well, it's sort of. <laughs> put we'll get in push the controller <laughs> in your hands, put the weed in the pipe, and you smoke it. Oh, geez. Cheetos. Cheetos. Bong rips. Play. Station. Uh, what do the kids play with now? Is it still a Sticks, joystick? Uh, VR, VR. Do they like VR? Do you, do you, is getting very Justin Royal and improving. Do you uh, like VR? Do you do VR? Uh, I have the uh, Google uh, Daydream or whatever the hell. Okay. Um, and that's pretty cool. That's I mean for cheap, mm -hmm. you know, a hundred dollars to put for a thing to put your phone in that looks. You know, like VR, simulated VR is yeah. pretty dope. Um, I did the cardboard one, which is literally a $3 version of that. And it's neat, but I couldn't find a way to work it into my life. I did, uh, when I was at like a IT convention thing, there was this train company that did testing or uh, did training Union through. Pacific. Yeah, yeah. And I put the helmet on that, and like that one was like way more, you know, well, that VR. Was a full oh, cool! Rig yeah, that yeah, yeah, that was an Oculus. And, and it was an actual like training that one was trippy as fuck. For train operators. Is it disorienting, or are you yeah. like in it and you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I feel like I'm just in a different reality, or what's yeah, the... I think but it's you're it gives you so much peripheral vision is part of why it's so wow. It's no, yeah, it was hard. It was hard. Of what did you do in it? So the the training is going to check the train. That's so you're was, that was the disappointing part, was that <laughs> they had this amazing <laughs> VR virtual training setup. You're doing right. the lamest it's, shit. And it's to like train you to like tur you know, run this control on the train, go check this part of the train. Right. You know? Like this could be made out of cardboard. Like and, and have this yeah. same effect. Yeah. Except that it's with like Oculus Rift and like right. graphics and stuff like But again, but what you're doing is like just turn the knob. Yeah. Exactly. We we had paper for that. It was we didn't need a multi-million dollar, but cool, whatever. That's what it'll start with anyway, right? And then ultimately, though, sex. It, it makes me think of like those, <laughs> those, uh, um, those cheap video games on like The Simpsons where they go to the discount bin and it's like Putterman's Challenge, and uh, you know, it's like train operator maintenance. You know, right, would like, right. Would be one of the games to that bin. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's that's uh, I I've VR I've VR'd. And it's, it's just as, it's crazy, man. It's really fucked up. Yeah. Really fucked up. Did they do anything more intense than the, than the train stuff or it was just, but, but it's, I mean, how do, is your brain ever like, Oh, now we are in this or were, yes. you, were you always aware that it was really, Immediately I am like, Oh God. Yeah. Why can I, Oh my God. So the potential of that is pretty intense. Oh yeah, it's it's you completely feel like you're, you know, if they would have put me on a cliff, I would have had the same flight or uh, uh, fight reaction. Right. You know, same brush of adrenaline adrenaline as if I'd actually been there, and that was kind of the immediate feeling of putting on that helmet. Is mm -hmm. oh shit, 
I went from being in this loud, you know, conference hall to it's a sunny day in this weird, uh, you know, uh, poor, poorly uh, or low graphics environment. Desert. <laughs> it's just a nice sunny day, clear blue skies. No, oh, there's a cloud. Were they, were they like, when you say low graphics, were they like, was it, how realistic was it? It was like Sims 3. Okay. So ish. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, um, you know, it was for the feeling and sensory kind of fuck that it gave you. It was like, I've, I've played no, that's video the sex games. Simulation coming later. Sure, that's coming. That's, that's yeah, why no well, one's ever leaving the house again. And that's why. If you win the game, you get to go on top of the cockroaches the win. Take it to town. Take it to the station. I don't See, it, know. It, you know, you left that that convention too early because later on, I sat down and I found the hot coffee <laughs> pl- uh, <laughs> Easter egg plug in, in. The train one. You go to the other train conductor. It's like big old scruffy guy with a beard who's just like, <laughs> I've been working this guy for twenty six years. Want to get some hot coffee behind the train? You got it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how people are already having problems with like. I don't look like my Instagram filters. So if, cause like, that's a thing now, like teenagers are like having these issues because their Instagram make them look more Instagrammy. So if you can go into virtual reality and create your penis any way you want it, there's no way you're going to be able to walk around in life and not be bummed out. I'd be one of the saddest people around if I had more pictures of me from when I was that, you know, in high school, I just look at me and be like, fuck, why did you let them get to you? What do you mean, make you not an Instagram person or become a normal person? I would have been thoroughly fucked because I, 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 I would have held on to that unobtainable be- beauty of youth that I had going on. Sure. Um, so that You're would still have... young and beautiful, by the way, Seth. Thank beautiful. you. Thank you. She put a <laughs> ring on it. Uh, <laughs> But um, uh, it, it, the, I, I'm still, you know, a very uh, uh, narcissistic person. So, I mean, I can understand the youth's plight with their... It, it, although it's got to be ramped up, though, because of that shit. Because they're putting well, yeah. in the picture. Well, it's, it's weird. I mean, we spend more time looking at ourselves now than I think we ever had. People, just for the physical properties of a camera you weren't allowed it was really difficult to take pictures of yourself before but i think it's really telling that as soon as it was really easy to take pictures of ourselves a lot of us were like that's what i want to do i would like more pictures of me in my life that sounds fantastic yeah and it's sad that you know uh, it's not a uh it just took the older generation a little bit more time to catch on. Oh, they're it's getting not that they're oh, yeah. better. It's oh, just no, no, that no. they didn't know how. Nope, nope. And now they are yeah. ready to fill up your feed with nanas. Oh, bitch totally. Shit or shit. Totally. No, it's 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 not a generational thing. It's a human thing. It's a human yep. thing. Yeah. Yeah. We are attention grabbing. Uh, yep. We sure are. St- uh, r- savage motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, your your final thoughts on Red Dead Redemption Two are that human. T- Basically, all of humanity is attention grabbing whores, motherfuckers. But it's and a horse lot of fun. balls. And Sorry. horse balls. And it is fun. I cut you off. I apologize. No, I think yours was better. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Seth. And with that, let's move into our interview with Spencer Dux. Happy family gets uh, or hears when they're walking from commercial to commercial. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Spencer, you've got a lot going on lately since the last time you've been. You yeah. Know, which it's been like two years or one but year. To, uh, I don't remember. I want to say two. Yeah. It's been a real busy winter. Yeah. I hear that. Oh, man. <laughs> so, speaking of busy, what, what have you been up to? Well, for in the immediate moment, I'm enjoying a curing uh, is this espresso or cappuccino? Here's the thing. I was very skeptical about this cappuccino, to be honest with you, because it came out of a little cup and it's delightful. So that's where I'm at right this second. But let's go back uh, in time. So in November, I went to Las Vegas and I had a short film 
uh, it's an animated short called Drunk Girlfriend that I entered in the Comedy World Network Film Festival. Is this on your YouTube channel? It is on my YouTube channel, as a matter of fact. And uh, I won. I ended up winning in the animation category. And yay! And the film festival was a shit show. They, um, They had scheduling problems, so people ended up like their films weren't showing when they were supposed to show. And like, I sat in this very nice African coffee shop, keep scrolling down. Uh, there we go. That's me. Can people see this while they listen to it? No. no. Okay. Uh, and there go. See right there where the number 27 and the go to the cartoons playlist right there. Okay. Boom. This is good radio. Good radio. Drunk mm. girlfriend. There you go. Ah, perfect. So yeah, we will link to it. That's what I'm fantastic. Okay, so yeah, they, uh, you know, people showed up, people traveled from around the world, there were people from Iran, there were people from uh, Japan, and their films weren't playing when they were supposed to be playing, and things weren't happening when they were supposed to be happening, so there was a lot of angry people, and I watched some really amazing movies with like four people in the back of this coffee shop, uh, and it's too bad, because they would have really liked it, but um, I won, so suck a dick. Um, (laughs) And then... Uh, in December, I did four shows in three prisons, uh, going from minimum security all the way to maximum security, uh, because the state of North Dakota, and I really respect them for this, they realize that the pr- people that are in jail now, in prison now, are going to be your neighbors. So they want them to be socialized, and they want them to have human interaction. Someone actually thinks about that? Somebody that actually crazy. thinks about those things, and they want them to be normal human beings. And I got to say... Um, minimum security was a riot, a, a, like a fun time, like super nice people, not a riot riot, but like excellent, good people, good times. Medium security was a lot of fun. The only thing is I talked a lot about getting married and the people can't see it, but my lovely wife was just up on the, excuse me, on the screen there. And they're in, it was right before Christmas and they're in medium security jail, prison, and they're not leaving anywhere. So they really don't want to hear about your family. Yeah. And so they got a little like, oh, we're sad. Um, so I took that lesson to minimum security and we talked about masturbating a lot and they loved that. That's and good. We, That's good topic. We talked about ramen noodles a lot because in prison, ramen noodles are money. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that was a blast. And then I went to maximum security prison. And they uh, are murderers. <laughs> and, That's quite the segue. and by the way, in medium and minimum security, really nice people. Again, very happy to have company. And they had a good rapport with the guards. It was it was not like television. Steve's a good guy when he's not on meth. Exactly right. Well, and a lot of these guys, you know, a lot of people in prison, they're, they did the best they could with the, with what was in front of them. People make mistakes, you know, and I, I, I admire North Dakota for trying to turn them into, you know, help them become better people. So I get to maximum security prison. The outside is all barbed wire. And in the joke, I point out that it's very much like an Aussie concert. You might have to <laughs> Google that. That's an old person joke, Seth. But um, I think if you look it up, you'd find it's quite amusing. Quite amusing. I'll give you butterscotch candy okay. after the show. Um, <laughs> and you go, you have to get, uh, you have to give them your f- Uh, You leave your phone in the car. You have to give them your driver's license and your keys. So then you're like, oh, if this goes south, I have to get through like four steel doors to leave. So it's kind of like a cruise ship. Like once you're in there. (laughs) Right. And we go in. At least you don't have to swim across an ocean. That's exactly right. You just have to fight your way out of an army of of felons. Um, Like a cruise ship. Much like a cruise ship, depending upon your cruise ship. (laughs) Um, and I, I, I'm not doing the bit version of this. There is a bit version of this, too. Okay. I'm giving you the extended version sure. of this uh, and trying to show a little bit of humanity for the for the people that were there. But they did give me a tour and they've got like a, a an, even in Maximum, they got a great art room. They've got a cool band room. One of their guys is an amazing drummer. And I swear to God, I'm standing there bullshitting with one of the guards and he goes, just so you know. And the, the show is in a gymnasium, like a high school gymnasium. There's yeah. nothing in between me and the murderers. Right. It's just me and felons and uh, bad acoustics and a bad PA. And they gave them bingo cards before the show. And in prison, motherfuckers love bingo. You know why? Because they're in prison and it's better than getting buggered. And <laughs> as, it's true. as is always the case, unless you like being buggered, in which case we'll Prisons see. For you. For, possibly. So 
um, he goes up to me and he goes, hey, um, just so you know, these guys are trying to decide if they can kick your ass. And I'm like, great. Thank you so much for putting that in my head right before the show. And we start and they're not listening, right? Because they're getting cookies and the PA is bad. So the show is coming out like, that's what they're hearing from me. Yeah. And the guy doesn't really introduce me. He's just kind of like, and there's no like, <laughs> let's have a round of applause. You know, like that. There, there's the, no, it's, it's just kind of like, and next week it will be doing a salad. And like, <laughs> exactly right. Also exactly. here's Spencer Dobson. Exactly right. Very, very funny man. Come here. So I have to like, hey, how's it going, guys? How do you make your ramen noodles? And they're like, fuck ramen noodles. I'm like, great. Well, that worked really well the other day. I was hoping we could ride on that. <laughs> and I go, uh, hey, uh, what's your name? And this guy goes, Chrome. Fuck me. <laughs> and Chrome goes, say something funny, motherfucker. And I, being hilarious, go, here's something funny. After the show, I'm going to sleep in my hotel room, and then I'm going to fuck your mother. And Chrome did not take kindly to that <laughs> statement. You did that in the match? I That's totally fantastic. did that. We're playing the game. It's... It's 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 we came to a comedy show. You exactly right, man. You can't back down because then you're done. This is prison. So Chrome fucking shoots out of his chair and he's like, "What'd you say about my mother?" And right there, I know he's bullshitting because nobody does that. Nobody ever. I've worked on. I've been kitchen staff. I've worked on lines. I went to public school. I've done comedy everywhere. I did Dickinson, North Dakota during the oil rush, which, mm, by the geez. way, has the exact same that's, ratio that's of way, penis to vagina as that's, prison. That's way worse than prison. Very, very similar. Because they've got more access to drugs and weapons. And they don't have any guards to tase them. You yep. just have a little Chinese uh, bartender lady who gets in between you and the guy that doesn't like that you told him to shut the fuck up. So... Uh, Chrome is standing behind. That's what happened. That's an actual story too. But Jesus. comedy can be a little hostile sometimes. It's okay. And also, you have to stand your ground. You yep. can't let the felon guy. But now time has slowed down, and maybe this is going to get weird. Uh, but he's standing behind two folding chairs, and he's like twenty feet from me, and the guards are probably fifty feet from me, so he can get to me first if he needs to, right? I'm taller than he is, so I can do the thing where I hold my hand out and he, like, my arm is longer than his. So if I can keep him from connecting for a couple of minutes, hopefully the guards will get to him. But nobody in the in the history of your mother jokes has ever taken it literally anywhere ever, right? Nobody's like, hey, you can't talk about Elizabeth Mickelson that way in front of these felons. I'm not going to stand for that. And all he's got to do is get through some folding chairs, which for some reason, he's having an amazingly <laughs> difficult time hurling. So I'm like, oh, he's full of shit. This is going to be fine. And then, and I'm glad <laughs> because if he kills me, right, and this is the bit part, but if he kills me, right, the headline in the story is going to be local comedian dies doing what he loves. And I do not love getting kicked in the neck by a goddamn felon. That is not my favorite thing. I love ice cream and watching Netflix with my wife and our cats. Those are my, <laughs> those are my favorite things. Comedian I, does I killing feel like that murders. is like a one way ticket to <laughs> comedian Valhalla, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. There's there'll be a retroactive Netflix special, uh, and then a lot of black and white photos of me float by <laughs> with, a, <laughs> with a mullet. A bunch of old recordings emerge. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> oh, and then I was with uh, the lovely and talented Mary Mack last night. You m mentioned Justin Roiland uh, moments ago. She's going to be a voice on Justin Roiland's new show. Um, I had it written down. Solar Connection. I forgot the name. It's coming out soon. Cool. Uh, and it's, it's a Justin Roiland jam. And she was the voice of Dylan on uh, Golan the Insatiable on FX, which you may remember. Oh, God, yeah. Okay. Great show, right? Yeah. So she was just in Aberdeen last night. We had an art council That's show. That's fucking awesome. She destroyed. We packed it out. It was amazingly great. Really, excuse me, talented person. And now my six degrees of Justin Roiland is down to one. Nice. Mm hmm Oh, man. Yeah. That sounds like a hell of a show. But speaking, speaking a hell of a show, you've mm -hmm. got some... Got some shows coming up around here, a little closer to home. We're doing uh, the Snow Jam. That's next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? Yep. And it's at 8th and Fernson and Ball, or 8th, Fernson on 8th is the name of the venue? 
Uh, first hit on eighth, and then bosses, and then bosses comedy, comedy club, which is in and bosses then, pizza. Uh, the headliner uh, is, I think he's at uh, Icon. I want to say. Uh, Are you talking about Kevin? Yeah, guy from Kids in the Hall. Kids in the Hall. Now I know he's doing a um, a workshop. Is he also he is. doing a show? Yes. Oh, great. He, he's doing one or two shows. No, I think just one show. Okay. But then he's also doing the all day workshop. Yeah. At Icon. So yep. if you are like a sketch or improv comedy person and you right. have the coin, uh, that would be really amazing. What was the price on that one? It's like I, 180, right? Yeah, I think it's like 180. And and if you've got 180, definitely worth it. Kids in the Hall, groundbreaking. If you for some reason don't know who they are, Google Kids in the Hall, they will blow your mind. I would say they definitely maybe didn't create, but were one of the people who set the tone for modern comedy as it stands right now. Like on my sketch Mount Everest, it's or or or, or Mount Rushmore, it's Monty Python, Kids in the Hall. Then Saturday Night Live, Mr. Show. Uh, then there's that's that's all of them. Those are my favorite folks. I sadly like I know about Mr. Show, but I hadn't I haven't gone back and watched it. I want you know I'm a huge fan of David Cross. Mm-hmm. Um, for yeah yeah. Um, my brother had a recording of his, and it was like one track from mm-hmm. his CD, and it was about a far side. Uh, comic, mm-hmm. and how did he pronounce? How did he mispronounce spaghetti? Uh, <laughs> Pagetti. Um, well, that's not the Far Side. That's the Family Circus. Family Circus. Okay. Yeah, Family Circus is it was a cartoon in. There used to be this thing called a newspaper, and they would print up words, and you could have them. They would deliver it to your house like a pizza that you read. And there was this so thing like through. How did you order it though? Like through Grubhub. You had to ride a mule into Uber? town. Uber news it? Okay, uh, you would, uh, a, a mule is like an Uber that's an animal that's whose balls contract when you ride it, if it's cold. You know. So uh, now you have a frame of reference. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And Family Circus was a really saccharine, cute little family cartoon. I think it still exists, doesn't it, Robert? Which one? Family Circus? Yes. Yeah, it just like barely a joke very like oh well that's family friendly far side was a brilliant like unbelievable stephen wright-esque surreal one panel comic that a lot of people from my generation i i i believe they hold up i hard to say but um yeah incredibly funny incredibly smart comic so i'm not going to sit here and let you conflate the family circus and the far side because no sir that will not stand well, the Garfield certainly. <laughs> I mean, it it, uh, it 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 had much more of a shine when I was younger. But then again, sure. I, I we had those like huge books of just oh, yeah. Garfield comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, love I those. mean, yeah. Those after you read fun. all of them, uh, then the new ones are. But just but like, Garfield is no far side by any stretch of the oh, imagination. Oh well, no, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. stretching. And what's like, funny yeah. is that uh, this this is like a fresh topic just from an office conversation I had recently because for Christmas. My family used to always get me the new year of the Far Side comic when I right. was in high school. Oh, awesome. And I loved that. that Gary Larson won daily. And yeah. And oh, like every one of them just to fucking yeah. knocked it out of the park. Yeah. It's like, I don't remember any that I didn't like not smile at least about. Yeah. Uh, so there's this guy that, or this one that's called Tales from the Edge or something like that. Right. That is like really... The art style like is close, but it's like he's not quite as good an artist as Gary sure. Larson. Sure. And the comedy is like trying for it, but it doesn't quite get there. Yeah. We're having a conversation with because this for the first time in years, my parents got me another uh, once a day calendar like that. Right. And I'm guessing they looked at the cover and it looks just like far far. Right. Side. Right. And they're like, oh, one of these again, and it's just like, it's not the same thing. It's is it called like the side that is off in the distance? Also, to, like to kind of be like, ah, oh, yeah. close enough. Uh, it's, uh, but it's, it's good. It's, mm. it's enjoyable. One or one out of three. Like every third day is one where I'm like, yeah, that makes me happy. That's okay. totally like Gary. And it's a, it's like a calendar. Yeah. And it's a daily calendar, but it's like, you have a few weekdays where it's just kind of like, and I can't tell if it's because I was a little kid when I had the Gary Larson stuff right, right. and I was more open mm-hmm. or if it's this one is just not quite as 
as on. It's like it feels just a little off. Right. But I'm still enjoying it because like at once every three days, I'm just like, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, oh, good. I'll give him that one. That's, that's good. good. But yeah, so it's funny you bring up Gary Larson because I was just like, this is so fresh in my mind right now. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure cartoonists like everyone else have their influences, you know? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, like I lived in L.A. Uh, when Mitch Hedberg was still alive and he came through one. And by the way, wherever, do you know who, you know who Mitch Hedberg is? Hey, I, uh, I, my, my pants or my belt holds up my pants, but my belt loops hold up my belt. I'm unsure who the hero in this Seth situation is, really boom, is. Perfect, yes. Seth is a, is a uh, fanatic. Oh, great. I he has a little shrine to Mitch Hedberg. Oh, fantastic. him, like, all the time. Yeah, I've worked with Mitch in Minneapolis and know him, and he's a great... He was a really cool guy. <sighs> and one of the interesting things about Mitch is, like, if you went to an open... Okay, you go to an open mic before Mitch Hedberg goes to town, and everybody sounds like themselves. And then Mitch Hedberg comes through town, and then all the comics are like, so... The other day, I was eating pancakes. They all stopped the cake. They all, they all had it. Yeah. In fact, I tried to give Mitch this joke, and he did not need a writer. But I still like the joke. That, that was the fun thing to do in Minneapolis was write Mitch Hedberg jokes. Nice. Uh, and mine was, uh, everybody was so impressed because Jesus could walk on water. But what if he just had really buoyant feet? <laughs> I think it's the pause that makes it, it the... Yeah, he could definitely have, you know, worked it in with the citrus. I, you know, yeah, he, he, I'm, not, a, I'm not offended. Of I'm not offended, but uh, what's... I don't know the citrus joke. Or maybe I do. What's the citrus joke? Oh, sure you do. Oh, man, I can't quite... I, I, I can't do this one justice, but it's right. basically like, man, I love these frilly drinks, man. They served me one with a, with a lime in it. The lime floated. And I was like... And I was on a ship, and I was like, well, if we shrink, or if we sink, I will grab onto these limes. It's a little citrus buoyant. I don't know. It's something along those lines, but if you look up Mitch Hedberg, okay. lime, <laughs> citrus buoyant. Fantastic. You'll get and, and I feel we're also at the point where I, I think we should say, just go listen to Mitch Hedberg, and we will stop butchering it for you. It's delightful, and you'll love it. Yeah, he, he really does a good Mitch Hedberg, Mitch Hedberg. Mitch Hedberg's Mitch Hedberg impression is fantastic. Spot on. Yeah. He never His Cosby sucked. Terrible. 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 Now what do you want to talk about, podcaster? <laughs> well, what was your uh, inspiration for your uh, animation that you animated and won a national prize for? Uh, well, the the what made me start doing animation or what inspired the bit? Uh, yeah, that the, the specific one that uh, led to your acclaim. All right, the bit is about a girl I used to date who really liked to drink a lot, which is sometimes adorable, but then it just turns into babysitting, and I don't want to ruin the bit, but um, we only went on three dates, and each date ended up being ridiculous, and uh, and again, I don't want to ruin the bit for you, but um, she wet the bed. Um, and and there's a whole story to it. And she was the top bunk. Boop, boop, boop. College. <laughs> The uh, but I started doing animation. There's a, a here's another piece of comedy history. It, it, Lenny Lenny Bruce was a comic from the 50s and 60s who got arrested, uh, died of a heroin overdose while fighting for free speech, basically in court. And uh, there is a and and I used to know the guy's name. I looked it up, but an, an animator in the 50s took a bit of his called "Thank You Mask Man" and put a cartoon over it using live stand which now is pretty common you use the live stand up as the auto track audio track and then you put the cartoon on top of it but yeah. at the time it was like whoa that's crazy but i never had the skill set to do that until computers got good yeah um and i initially i, I bought a, a nexus 7 one of the first ones and the drawing um program on it the the little like sketch program was so good i'm like oh you could maybe start tying these together and then i started digging into um consumer animation software and it turns out it's really affordable and there if you're willing to lean into it and learn how to do it um you can do anything and my art is okay like i have a friend who's a, co a, a comic book artist named alex who's a way better artist than i am but his doesn't move and he doesn't have comedy underneath it and so so there alex suck it. <laughs> in conclusion suck it my suck a friend. dick my friend <laughs> no he's really talented okay now let's let's take it back we're reverse mark marrying and marinating this okay uh we're yeah let's do you want go to talk back about mark further. 
That's uh, what was your you know what got you into animating and drawing in the first place? Well, drawing is just um, not Garfield, but like uh, the the newspaper, the 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 Sunday comics, and I think kids doodle. And I lived in a town of twenty nine people, and we didn't hunt or fish. And it's winter in North Dakota, so you draw because that's there's crayons available to you, and it's just something to do. Um, and then in high school, um, um, you know, you become like a, a, a you, your trapper keeper gets all doodled on. Oh yeah, and things like that. And uh, for a while in the '90s, I was trying to do a comic strip. I was trying to take the act and turn it into comic strips, and those got pretty good. But I didn't understand like how to use a scanner. Because, again, a lot of stuff wasn't as readily commercially available as it is right now. And my, my, my computer skill set is much higher than it was. Um, I don't know if this is an interesting story, but that's what happened. I wanted to know. And uh, you told yeah, me. right on. So there you go. Not hilarious, <laughs> but th- them's the facts, Jack. Hey, man, that's, that's not necessarily what they come here for, but that's sure. what they're going to get sometimes. Right. <laughs> and I also do a, I do a cartoon, a standalone cartoon called Clutch that is one minute and it lives on Instagram and it's just this character uh, doing rants about like stuff you find at gas stations and things like that. Uh, And he is wearing kind of a maroon hat. It is not a mega hat, but it is a red ish hat uh, much like Daryl Gribble from um, King of the Hill. And he is a little rednecky because we have a TV show host for president Therefore, we're all a little rednecky now, whether we like it or not. That's true. That, that it's a, it's diffusion. You know. That's yeah, science. yeah. It's it seems to be the voice that people will listen to, and and I don't go into anything too heavy with it, but uh, it's it seems approachable. Yeah, it seeped into the mountain. That yeah. one rolled down. It just seeped down. Yeah, and I could have done the North. I didn't know how to do the North Dakota accent, which is my accent of birth. Because, the oh, God, you guys, we should go out. But that tends to be flat and emotionless. Uh, but then I saw Letterkenny, like, last week for the first time. If you've not seen it, it's a Canadian television show. Unbelievable. And he has made that flat, stoic, we live in a really cold place character really funny in a way that I, I was not able to capture it. I've always found the, the southern accent has more uh, range to it and more emotion to it. Then uh, we're we're people in in this climate tend to, especially before um, the automobile got good, we tended to fight a lot less because it's too cold. You just stuff your emotions with alcohol and venison. Yep. Yep. You were reserved because it was warmer. Yeah, because if you get kicked out, you'll probably lose a toe at best. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. Town of 29 people in North Dakota. Yeah. I, I can relate. Town of 200 people in South Dakota. Oh, we envied you. Yeah, we would go. Minto was our I, town of two hundred people my, that we my, looked up my, to. My joke is always that I graduated at the bottom of my class of nine. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have, yeah, been at the bottom of my thirteen class, but wow. I, I jumped ship though and ended up finishing uh, in Aberdeen. But yeah, I oh was no, kidding! From a town of uh, seven hundred, wow, old Burke, where. The next governor of South Dakota should have, should have hailed mm. from, or the current governor should have hailed from. But no. anyway, sorry, I. Just, oh, so you're kind of out west, right? Just about thirty miles west of the river. Yes. Yep. Okay. Nice. Yep. Um, but yeah, yeah, small town life, eh? Boys. Oh yeah, eh? hey boys, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. really what you expect on a Sioux Empire podcast. Some guy from California is like fast scrolling, fast scrolling stuff yeah. at this point, and it's like, yeah, this is what I had expect. From yeah, you. It, yeah. Uh, comedy news podcast in the in South Dakota. Yeah, let's eat some taters, boys. Yeah, get, get some, some fries. Yeah, get some get some, get some protein. Get some tater tots, boys. <laughs> Look at them, they love. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I can't eat tater tot casserole anywhere I go. <laughs> what happened? Well, I'm not catching the reference. What happened? It's a Dave Chappelle reference. Oh, okay. A, <laughs> I can't eat chicken anywhere I go. Because I just think that so, yeah, I'm not going to do the bit, but mine was... All right, anyway. I'm going to lose my job for this. Great story. I'm going to lose my job. All right. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, man. So... Uh, what, do you have which, any? Uh, uh, do you have any aliases? Sorry, taters. In life? Yeah. Not really. 
Oh, okay, that's I good. Don't, I don't need one. My name's. Do you have a gamer tag? Spencer used to be a pretty unique name, uh, but not anymore. Now Spencer is catching up on Dylan. As far as like, there's a lot. There's a lot more Spencers. You than guys used have to that be. store. We had our store. I don't know how many people are named after the store. I was named after Spencer Tracy, and they lied about it until I was like 24, and they're like, "Yeah, we just named it." Spencer Tracy was an actor from the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Uh, and then there was also there was Spencer Gifts, and there was Spencer for Hire, and I probably a lot of Spencers from Spencer for Hire. But um, it used to be a name that you never ran into, and now again, there's more of us, and I'm not sure I like it. Same shit with Seth, man. Yeah, Seth is a great name too. It is. That's a good handle. And then you get all these uh, encroachers, you know, all these people. Uh, but there's some like good, like Seth Rogen's a good Seth. Seth. Yeah. Yeah. Seth, uh, what's the guy from uh, uh, Seth Myers? Seth Myers. Seth um, Robot Chicken. Seth Green. Seth Green. Seth Green. Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot of good Seths. Yeah, that that bastard even has my. Like last initial as well. Wow. Like Seth Glover, Seth Green. There was the uh, chat rooms. You get mistaken, and it's like I'm. Not, oh, I'm, my wife is not taller than me. <laughs> oh. There was the Seth. There was a Spencer on a reality show that I didn't watch because I didn't have cable at the time, but he sounded terrible. There are a few terrible Seths out there, but if you go to Urban Dictionary, it will say Seth, that awesome fucking person. Nice. Something, something, something. There's a Spencer Grammer that's a girl, and she's very hot. Uh-huh. And, but, and I'm, I'm fine with that, but it's like a girl named Charlie. It's a girl with a boy's name, in my opinion. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of Spencers, uh, you know, batting their eyelashes around. Yeah, yeah, but, but also, if you meet girls named Charlie, they're always trouble. Girls named Bobby and girls named Charlie, look out. You're going to end up getting a tattoo together. And then you're going to end up in Mexico, and you're like, we're married? And then they're going to leave. Which, you know. Then you'll have a hotel bill and crabs. Uh, in, in Mexico. Yeah. Well, Mexico's lovely. I've never been. I've never been outside of the country, unfortunately. Mm. I was yeah. there when I was a child, and I, and I have the internet. I, I Google stuff. It seems nice. I, I like to speculate. <laughs> That's like anywhere else, you it know. Was, I'm sure it it's got nice. its neighborhoods. It was nice when I'd go there in, like, 2007, but now I've seen the neighborhoods that I hung out in. In 2007, now in like in 2017, I'd see a uh, cooler filled with severed heads was found today in the Blasio district of yeah. So I'm just kind of like, sure. I probably won't be going back to those sure, parts of Mexico. Sure, sure, that happens in America though. Does it? Yeah, but they there's, there's did anymore. you watch the Ted Bundy thing? Yes, it does. It's yeah. not gang related. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a once in a like once in a decade freak sure, serial sure. killer thing. Sure, uh, not a like course of business where sure. you imagine like in a cartel maybe they have to like fill sure. in a form and it's sure. like okay so we had uh quattro heads in yeah, the well, cooler look as, as a person who's been sober for 17 years i still argue i'll uh, just legalize drugs done problem solved you're welcome next it's true next topic it's true gnome listen up <laughs> this guy's got some ideas and yeah I'm, I'm fixing stuff you're welcome in, in, in part one we were we had a very in-depth discussion about gnome's recent statement with the uh Weed is bad, even though eat her own party wants it sixty three to three. <laughs> uh, I um, Trump got me out of politics. Like I, I read the paper. I have opinions. Everybody is so mad now, and especially when you do comedy. Like if you mention the president, you can see people's eyes dilate. Yeah, and I feel there's honestly a real value to people sitting in a room laughing together and like not fighting for two seconds. Yeah, and I like there's so much like key jangling on both sides and like look over here and like knee jerk reactioning. And we still have stuff we need to get done. And we seem to be screwing up a lot of the good stuff and important stuff. So, uh, read the paper, read a good newspaper that has journalists in it and listen to a bunch of opinions. That's my opinion on politics right now. Uh, yeah, I, I hear it. Cause I'm just like, I have been on, like, I have a friend who, breathlessly brings me the news at work every mm-hmm. day about what Trump did. And I'm just like, I don't care anymore. I, yeah, it, it, it hurts. Unless, unless he like legit launches a nuke, like for real or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to hear about it because that's, that's what feeds him. So I don't, exactly right. So like, that's why we haven't done him as a topic on any of the podcasts in like two years. Try not to click on his, on too many. And my wife and I talk, that's another thing. Have people in your life and have discussions with people. Yep. 
and uh, and try to have. And I think we have a pretty high level of intellect at our breakfast table. And um, you know, I, I'm lucky. She always surprises me with with an interesting angle on things. Um, and again, living in South Dakota, I know so many really lovely people. And if you mention this one topic, they're they just change transform. Yeah. And I'm sure I've got issues like that too, but we forgot that we like each other. Yep. And, and we forgot that we need to figure out how to hang out and, and just, you know, equal treatment under the law for all fairness. Let's, and I realized when America started, you know, freedom for all was written by a guy that owned slaves. Yeah. But I don't care if he was full of shit we can still take that idea and create a livable, functional country where everybody's got a chance, and uh, and we can we can fix stuff. So vote for my show coming up. That'll be funny, and we won't talk about any of this shit. Nice. <laughs> You'll just laugh and forget about the polar vortex. And so, do you, do you know? I, I I don't know how it how it works with the with the snow jam. Do you know when you're performing in that or something? I like do. That? Okay. I gotta find my little schedule. Sure. Uh, let me open this up. Fill the space. Okay. Don't leave dead so air. Today I was trying to find my phone, and this mm-hmm. guy's trying to find something on his phone, and I couldn't find my phone. What? I, you have I, a phone, and I, you I, found stuff I on bet. it? No, I didn't find the phone, what? but you're okay. finding stuff. Okay, we're almost there. Keep talking. We're I, almost there. I'm trying. Got it. Okay. okay. Good story, God. Seth. Thursday, February 21st, 9 p.m., Tales and Ales, Ferns and Brewery. I will be doing... Uh, First impressions, uh, and I think it's going to be about, when I moved to Los Angeles, uh, I got sober, uh, and I had been smoking about two and a half packs a day at that point, and I was drinking uh, one se- half a 175 of Jim Beam in a sitting. Uh, so it was a good choice, but then my I quit smoking and drinking together. Oh, God. That fucks up your brain a little bit. So there's going to be a lot of stories of people I had spontaneous crying nervous breakdown in front of of apropos of nothing. And it was really, and one of them was the mind hunter because I worked (laughs) on a reality show uh, for uh, Douglas, uh, Jonathan Douglas. And we were, it was right after nine 11 and we were going to do, and he, he was better off with a Netflix show, but I'm driving the guy who can look at your shoes and be like, your dad was a pharmacist and your mother has got knuckle problems. And the, when you kill hookers, you like to wear a funny hat. And you're like, how does he do that? So I got to drive that guy from the airport. And he's like, how's it going? Blah, my family and my mom's mom died giving me, and I don't like it here. And it's, uh, and I can't stop. And his face is just like, oh God, just drop me off of my fucking hotel. <laughs> Please, you crazy fucking lunatic. But I'm also probably on a list now. Like, he's probably harmless, but just keep an eye on crying. And there's nothing better than a large man crying. Oh, yeah. Because your face contorts. And and also, people are in... Like, when a short person cries, they're not going to get snot on you. Maybe on your shoes, but I'm aiming right at your noggin if if, if the snot (laughs) snot starts flowing. So that's going to be a crazy show. And then, (laughs) then Saturday... Uh, 4 p.m., which is a little early, but I understand they have a festival schedule. I'll be at Boss's Pizza, uh, and that's the 4 o'clock show, so please come in and check that out, and that will be funny. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I think it's a seven-minute set. I haven't decided on what I'm going to do, but it'll be hilarious, and then after that, I go to Michigan and do uh, Gilda's Laugh Fest. So, wait, so you're doing uh, the the Snow Jam, Yes. then you're doing the Gilda's Laugh Fest... I'm doing Snow Jam, then I'm doing uh, Benton, Minnesota, a one-nighter, and then I go home, and then I go do two one-nighters in Michigan, and then I do two shows at Gilda's Laugh Fest. And those are all before you come back for that next weekend where you do Bosses, or is that... No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I do Snow Jam. Then Bosses is the 1st and 2nd of March. Yep. I think tickets are 15 bucks. I think. I think. And you can get them uh, Google... Uh, how do you get tickets? I think you Google bosses. Yeah, if you, and if there's you links go to, to bosses, it. like their Facebook page, there's usually yes. a link to buy tickets there. Yes, so. yes. And I believe there's a link on my spencerdobsoncomedy.com. If you go to calendar, I believe I put a link on my calendar. So that will uh, work for you too. Um, and it's going to be a great show. I have an opener who's super funny, whose name I don't know. And uh, they haven't told me, but you're going to love them. And, uh, and it'll be great. 
The nameless ones are always the funniest. Yes, S P E N C E R D O B S O N comedy dot com. What do you mean this can't be reached? Yes, it can. Let me find out what's going on. Um, but, uh, um, okay, so, wow. That's, oh, the packet are, isn't coming out. There were internet troubleshooting. Oh, the packet right there looks a little dirty. Oh, you okay. Have to... Well, my, my website is up, but it is Spencer, S-P-E-N-C-E-R. I'm sure I misspelled Spell it wrong. Dobson, D-O-B-S-O-N. But we will have a link to it in the show notes. Comedy. Yeah. And, uh, and there's videos on there. If you want to see uh, Drunk Girlfriend, that's also on there. Um, uh, there's my set from Laugh Your Asheville Off in 2015. That was a really good show. Uh, and yada, yada, yada. I also do corporate stuff if you need somebody to do your Christmas party, your birthday party, or whatever. You got a clean set, do you? I do have a clean set there that I can do there, but uh, nobody likes... People, the clean set's fine. But when they hire you to do the clean set, you go... What's the show? And they go, well, it's a bunch of adults having cocktails. I go, do you want it a little dirty? They're like, don't be too dirty, but be a little dirty. Because that's how we all are. We all like it a little bit dirty. Nobody wants to hear that much about puppies. <laughs> you can work around it. For even the prison thing, like, because the guy called me, like, stood up and said, hey, motherfucker. And to clean that up, all you do is go, I'm going to paraphrase and say, hey, one who makes love to people's mothers. And that's almost funnier. Because we've all heard motherfucker a lot, and we're expecting it, so when you when you just break it down into its parts, equally hilarious, if yeah, not more works. hilarious. It works very well. Uh, you know, it, do, it's, it is interesting. It really, when you try to do clean, it pushes you to explain things more creatively in a good way. But also, when it is 20 below and you live in a state, sometimes you just need to hear fuck a couple of times. Yeah. 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 yeah God there. Yeah. <laughs> fucking A. <laughs> Walking in my car, that's all I that's all it's playing in my head. It's fuck 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 yeah. fuck fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like a windy day, it's like a scream, you know, I won't do yeah. it, but you know, it's like <laughs> Yeah, and you can see it freeze in the air when it when the words come out. Yeah. Uh, it's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It's the winter fuck you. See, the, <laughs> yeah. see your own fucks. Yeah, you just see the little literal air that was the word like freeze and then fall to the ground. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then you see one that's in the you know shape of hope and that falls to the ground and then yeah. it's like dreams and it's like fuck off weather. Yeah. And it's but like, then it gets better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're very bleak for a young man. Well, yeah, I definitely uh, hit my cynic- cynicism uh, a little too early on, you know. Oh, uh, justifiable. You know, it's yeah. it's it's a weird times to be alive, but I, but it'll even out. I've been in the system, you know, so you know, mm-hmm. yeah. How old are you? I'm 28. Oh, you're okay. Yeah. So you've been you've been around the block a couple of times, but yeah, you're, a few times. You still have oper. There's still hope. I've been outside of South Dakota. Yeah, it can all it can all still come together. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm you never know. now. There's still hope. Are you for really? You. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, there you go. Is that pain? And I'm bet I'm guessing. No, it doesn't. No, really. Not when you get it. No, I'm just like playing around. So like, uh-huh. there's this app which, if I could get everybody's number and send you this re- uh, request, I could get some free stocks. Uh, but anyway, um, Robinhood, free plug for that that giant. Um, yeah, you can go in and just you know buy shit, gamble on the stock we market. Were, exactly. Exactly. And that we has never backfired. Cannabis uh, stocks, and then right. like. There was this one called Aurora, Aurora Cannabis mm-hmm. that my fiance bought a few shares in, and I found a telecommunications company called Aurora Mobile, mm-hmm. and I have made uh, it went up uh, two dollars and fifty cents since I bought it. Retire. Uh, <laughs> You're good to go. And now, and thanks, now Internet. It's turning into Look a horrible that. addiction. He, he immediately has a strong and, feelings now about the capital gains tax. <laughs> <laughs> You really changed your views on immigrants, too. That got <laughs> harsh fast. Well, when you're in the top bracket. By the way, you, you can tell we're from the Midwest, too, by the way, because the, the most popular Mexican restaurant is called Taco John's. Yeah. Not Taco Juan's. You didn't even workshop that? You didn't even no. call a Mexican and go, should we call it this? They're like, no. No, we, we live in that part of the country where the... The like middle aged like family or you know like adults and then with their kids are just kind of like let's go to a good Mexican restaurant where we don't say it explicitly but all the wait staff are white <laughs> yeah 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 I mean to be honest they were just ahead of their times 
Although they have been in the news for, you know, firing uh, their employees that are homosexual. Taco John's has? Yeah. What? Yeah, done in, uh, really? Really? No yeah, shit. Where? Just two, three oh, years ago. We oh, did a story I did hear on about it. that. Yeah. The, we did the a story one guy. On it. I'm sorry. I I thought. The one guy. He was like a 16, 17 year old kid. And, like, he, you know, he was. Uh, but, yeah, he, he, you know, definitely got picked on way too much. Right. Um, but, yeah, he, he uh, I don't know if he sued or if there was just a, uh, just a news story about it. But, um, yeah, he came out uh, and, the, you know, and. Uh, told people that he'd been treated poorly right. because of his sexual orientation. And yeah, that was yanked in, I'm pretty sure. And, uh, and clearly not okay, but probably not corporate policy. Probably bad staff. No, yeah, it's like, you know, a franchise. So, I mean, you know, yeah, it was yeah. totally... There's some kid named Tony yeah. who's like, he's the high, the, with, the manager is like a 20-year-old kid. and ma- Exactly. When yeah. you first said it, I thought you were going to like say something like a news story about corporate structure and across the board and i was like holy mm. shit how is that yeah. not a news fire story? yeah yeah that's crazy yeah Taco but Taco but there are unfortunately there i mean again good they should get sued not okay what an asshole i'm really i'm relieved to know that the taco johns is like an also don't be nice to the gay dudes because well. uh if it was Taco Wands, you know, there'd be SJWs that would be like, it's really by, created by white guys fronting. Yeah, you know, fair I, enough. I have not clicked on the story. That's tricky. But I've, ha- I've seen the headline that Gordon Ramsay is getting shit for creating yeah. an Asian restaurant so, without a ra- Asian, not a raisin fr- uh, chef, but an Asian fresh. So is the, the guy from Minneapolis who does uh, the, the strange food stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, Anthony or no. Not Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain's the dead guy. Yeah, I know. This is the Anthony bald... Zimmer or no. Zimmerman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's something Zimmerman. Yeah. And yeah, he said something like, This is gonna be real Asian food, not the crap you get in the mall. And all the Asian people that own stores in the mall were like, Hey mother, why are you why are you, why are you shitting on my stuff? Why are you stealing my moves and then shitting on me? That's he not would okay. Say that shit though, but he's real. I love yeah. that shit. Mm-hmm. Oh god, bizarre and good press for everybody involved. Yeah, mm, yes. We just well, any it turns out now all press is good press. Who knew? <laughs> we uh we don't have that in Aberdeen. We just we have a Chinese. Okay, I've been watching sushi move to Aberdeen. Uh, they there is grocery store sushi now that has Japanese sushi chefs, and you get to stand outside of the like and stand and watch people get the courage to try sushi for the first time, and it's always like a couple. And she's always like, we should do this. And he's always like, get something with a lot of cream cheese, because I'm pretty sure this is going to kill me. And, like, I admire the courage that that guy's, you know, like, he's going out of his comfort zone, you know? It's like he's rescuing a baby from a burning building kind of courage. I'm like, good for you. But now the Chinese restaurant makes surprisingly good sushi. And, like, if you're in Minneapolis, I think you would be like, well, you're getting Japanese food from a Chinese restaurant. It's not the same thing. You're not doing it. But I tell you what, there are people in China at a German restaurant right now ordering burritos. And their kids are like, I don't think burritos are German. And the dad's like, it's white people food. Shut up and eat. <laughs> and the kids are like, I don't think Mexicans are white. And the dad's like, do you want to sit in the trunk? Because you're going to sit in the trunk. It's fine. Eat. Yeah, Enjoy. Are- Food's lovely. Yeah. Blend uh- cultures. <laughs> uh we just joke about that uh, uh one of the trips one of my said earlier trips to mexico one of the best places we ate at was uh, mm-hmm. the resort had a chinese restaurant was just, like, <laughs> all mexican staff and we're like in cancun it was like okay you really think chinese food but it was amazing of course it was, like, fantastic you know well it's a resort yeah yeah emberdeen had to get the culture because i mean I, I I went to Northern for two weeks in two thousand nine, uh-huh. two thousand eight. It's fuzzy because I didn't go to college very much, right? Um, but uh, or at least not at that time. Right. College graduate now, motherfucker, drunken good job. tip from ten years ago. Good job. Um, but yeah, you could go to the Barnett Center and you know see uh, Korean Got Talent. Yeah. Um, I swear, man, Northern has a lot of foreign exchange students. They totally in Asia. do. We now have, so, we now have a Somali restaurant that makes amazing chicken. Oh, nice. Um, oh, I think we have a Korean grocery store now. I have not been to it yet, and that's that's on me because I love Korean food. I make really good pad thai. I like authentic food. Um, we've got an African grocery store, uh, and we've got like the brass kettle, which kind of pushes the envelope. We've got um, 
there is a Chinese restaurant right across the street from Northern that's pretty good. And the, the Northern itself does like dinners and stuff where they try to promote the cultural foods from the different areas. Um, like LA for me really opened the door. Well, Minneapolis and Los Angeles both taught me a lot about like, cause in the Mexican food in LA is like Mexican food. And like we would sometimes, and this is a little snotty, but we would go to like the taco place and be like, I dare you to eat tongue. I dare you to, you know, and, and try to get out of your comfort zone and eat food that maybe Midwesterners aren't necessarily comfortable with. And usually it was really good. That's my kind of like an eating experience yeah. is try that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it could well, be horrible. Or you could love it. Yeah. And here's the thing that's not gross, but that I just didn't sound right. That turned out to be great. They have the carts and the guy's got corn on the cob in it. And then he puts mayonnaise on it and rolls it in Parmesan cheese. That's a Latino thing. And I'm like, that can't be good. Oh, no. It is the greatest thing you've ever put in your face. It Sounds is like fantastic. Crap. I gotta love me some corn. Yeah. Like, I've never had corn like uh, my fiance has prepared it. Yeah. And she just makes it with butter, salt, and pepper. Yeah. All right? And I've been yeah. having shitty corn, but now it's like... Well, oh, even shitty think? corn but is like, good corn. Exactly, exactly. I love right. corn. And you're telling that, and I'm like, mayonnaise on corn. And then you're like, but then you put cheese on it, and I'm like, fuck, that sounds delicious. Oh, it's incredibly good. We, In fact, they had it at the Brown County Fair this year. Somebody had a cart. Nice. And it was me and my wife and like one other person going, this is great. And all the local was being like, I'm not putting mayonnaise on corn. That's crazy. Damn. But like, I had pho back in the '90s before that was a thing. And uh, again, it's just a big bowl of soup with a bunch of stuff in it. But holy buckets! That's first worth- time I had pho. It was at my girl uh, of the time girlfriend's uh, mm-hmm. house. She was mm-hmm. Vietnamese, so mm-hmm. that was the probably the best pho I will ever taste because it was homemade. And oh, like, that's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. stupid good. Yeah. I like, and ramen now is kind of coming into its own. I went to the Ugly Delicious guy. Have you watched that on Netflix? Uh, David Fong, I think is his name. Um, He's a really popular, he's like the hipster chef right now. And he's got a restaurant in Las Vegas. Um, And I don't, it's, it's next to Milk Bar, which is a like really expensive high end milkshake place. And I got his ramen. The pork belly was really good. It was like 17 bucks for a bowl of ramen and it was fine. But I was staying at the plaza downtown, so then I went to the cheap North End ramen place and got $7 ramen, where they simmer the broth for like 12 hours, and uh, and it was better. And I had a donut that was a Pop-Tart. So it's like donut-sized Pop-Tart filling with crumpled up Pop-Tarts in it. <laughs> what? Damn. Come on. Damn. And you would think that's just flashy, but no. It's fantastic, sir. It was fantastical. Hey, man, when you go and you try and do those, you know, tw- budget meals, it, it doesn't turn out bad. Always. Oh, no, there's great I mean, stuff. And I think it's the Food Network's fault. It is. Because I drove around here in the 90s and there was nothing to eat. Now you go and everybody's making their chicken wings a special way. And we've got our brisket burger. And I cut you off. Sorry, what were you saying, Seth? Oh, man, I was just going to say that, like, I was just down in Denver and I just let my fiance just pick everything. Mm-hmm. And it was all like we were going to be eating, you know, on the budget. And every place, it was a place that I hadn't been before, which I had live in, lived in Denver for a year. Right. Um, but, um, so yeah, it was a completely different place every time, and every time it was great. Uh, yeah. It, it, yeah, and it was, it's all Food Network's fault. I th- Partially, I mean, it's a lot of things. You, the reason there's sushi everywhere now is because they learned how to flash, freeze, fish, and fly it. That's a lot of alliteration. But you can get fresh fish in the Midwest quickly so you don't get food poisoning and it doesn't get ruined in the process. So that's one thing. And just shipping in general has improved dramatically. And we have more knowledge. And I mean, like a lot of people went into the, you know, like the ramen noodle craze, you know, like uh, uh, David Chang, I believe is the guy's name. Oh, he, yeah. did, he didn't start off with um, fancy Asian ramen noodles. He just ate crappy ramen noodles when he was a kid. And like, what can we do with this? And ended up making some really amazing stuff. And um, people just learn how to play with the foods they have and get creative. And now you've got flavors and, and ingredients that weren't always available to you. I'm sure there is some tater tot hot dish that would, that is next. Le- and I know for a fact there is next level tater tot hot dish um, because everybody takes their comfort food. And, and, and like, there's a lot of macaroni and cheese happening now too. Oh, yeah. That's like, Holy cow. I never thought you would see that happen with macaroni and cheese, but, but here we are. And I think part of it's pot. It's yeah, it's definitely pot, but it's also you know high speed internet in the nineties and the early aughts. You couldn't you know watch a video of Gordon Ramsay. Good point. 
fucking making you uh, scrambled eggs like fucking he makes tasty it. Videos, right, man. yeah, yeah, Dude. yeah. And you couldn't Google how do you make brisket. No. You, you either had to know a guy or buy a book. Or both. Or both. Probably both. Yeah, that's amazing. The Gordon Ramsay eggs, by the way, always stick to the bottom of the pan, but they're so good. Now, do you use sour cream or do you actually have creme fraiche? just lying around the house because you're that kind of fancy day trader that's got that kind of money. I, Throw honestly, a little caviar on there with that two bucks of day trading money you made. It, was like, it was like three years ago when I was living alone and I, I made <laughs> scrambled eggs just like he said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was so, I mean, they've ne- I've never yeah. had eggs better than that. And it just was made like, them. I did that shit. Mm-hmm. I did that shit. But, um, uh, uh, um, it's, I don't, I didn't, I don't like... Uh, sour cream, so I didn't have it on hand. Really? So I just didn't. I for went. I for forgo that. Uh, but you know what's good? Do you like delicious. yogurt? Yeah. Uh, you can substitute um, Greek yogurt, just plain Greek yogurt, and put it in scrambled eggs, and it's really rich and it's really oh, it's fantastic. My uh, col- culinary knowledge and mind and everything has been opened up uh, 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 because my my fiance she actually went to like culinary school. Or a culinary uh, thing, and so right. like she's uh, just on a different level than I am. Is she like a chef, um, or is she like studying to be a chef, or like a sous chef? Or no, but like the ultimate goal uh, would be to either have a food truck or a bakery, or a food truck bakery, or like a uh, you know a <laughs> food truck that's just baked goods. You know? Here's the problem with the food truck, in my opinion: somebody can steal your dreams because if, if you leave the keys in it, they can just drive <laughs> away with your future. That's rough. <laughs> And I've been to, like, Portland, and, like, boy, you, you look at these folks, and you're like, I bet you wish you could go to another room for five minutes, because you're just in this little metal box with an oven and hoping people show up. Yeah. And, I mean, if it's, like, you see people do it at the fair here, and they're doing, like, a 48-hour, you know, run, and then they go back to their lives, and they make a lot of money. But if your main gig is doing a food truck, you better really love what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's she's she's definitely on the level of the she has got the capability of it. Um, so that's kind of the end result right what, now. What is, what is her so what is her forte job? Forte. Mm-hmm. What does she like? Um, so she makes creme all the time. So uh, like uh, you know um, um, like creme brulee, but you know just once without the brulee. So you got a lot of torches um, around your house. No, no, because she doesn't do the brulee. Oh. Um, she does it sometimes with broil, just the broil on the oven. Right. Because, um, and that's... Yeah, that works. Man, fucking fantastic. She yeah. made uh, cheesecake uh, mm. the night of uh, Valentine's Day. What kind? Was it just straight up cheesecake or did she... So, like, um, we have these little, like, uh, uh, ramekins. Right. And so, um, it was just, like... Um, so it was, it was, I don't know what, it was just like fucking the good, it was just straight cheesecake. I don't know. There was nice. like no yeah. flavor, but yeah, it was, or I mean, not like. Straight a, up cheesecake is fantastic. Yeah. You don't need to do anything it to was, it. Yeah. Perfect. But you can, and, everything. and that's also good. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's her forte. I make some souffles occasionally. Okay. I like to do that because. Boy, those like, are, that's, you guys are doing tough stuff. Well, I mean, the funnest thing about it, like I figured out like how to uh, make um foam from alton brown and ever since then I've oh just been wow like, I so you're like a master micro gastronomy guy everything right? with you know egg whites that i fucking can right just, let's go to town beat this shit so what's the secret to your foam just um, whisking a lot well uh you gotta put some water in there and then some right. cream of tartar okay a little bit of cream of tartar okay um that's it basically um yeah for the foam I make uh, I make fofo, which is uh, Kessler's in Aberdeen, fine grocery store. You can buy like a thousand pounds of pork butt for twenty four dollars. And Kessler's so I, is a great grocery store. Yeah, and a great meat meat department. Yeah. And so I'll buy a lot of pork butt and chunk break it up into chunks, and then you braise it. You 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 season it like you put a spice rub on it. I usually go with at least a little cayenne, little brown sugar, a lot of chili powder, a couple of other things, maybe some allspice, so it's got a little Middle Eastern flavor to it. Sear it, cut up um, mirepoix, do you know celery, carrots, onions chicken stock to about half full bake it to 200 shred it um and then you reduce the leftover stock 
but I take like a cup of that out. I reduce it halfway, take a cup of stock out, reduce it down till it's just like syrupy, then toss the pork in that and then put that under a broiler so it gets crunchy. And then more chicken stock in a new pan. Do like, again, dice up celery, onions, uh, and carrots. And I do brown rice and black beans because it's a perfect protein and a really good fiber. And then take the juice from the pork and add that to the chicken stock. And then you get that umame, that, that you know, and then add an anise star, right? right. And then a little yeah. fish sauce and a cinnamon stick. And now you've got a kind of, it's probably not as good as the pho that your girlfriend made, but it'll do the trick in Aberdeen in the winter. For sure. And then, uh, yeah, cut up some basil and uh, some sprouts and uh, parboil, you know, like I finally figured, we finally got an egg timer that helps me get a medium boiled egg. That nice. To me, that has been the greatest challenge of my existence is getting an egg so it's semi-hard. My next thing that I'm going to try is uh, the uh, Eggs Benedict because I've never made a hollandaise sauce. And I've oh, never, my God. I've never really fucked with poached eggs. So I can I, I can hook you up, my friend. Oh, I I just, I you know, Gordon Ramsay has a 10-minute thing mm-hmm. on it. and it's, He always it, makes it look so easy. We'll see what happens. Do you want to eat less butter? No. Or do you not care? I don't give a fuck. Okay, well, um, as somebody who's lost family members to uh, to Emeril Lagazzi, uh, I'm pretty sure literally... Uh, I have a I have a recipe that you sub you, you, it's it's a hollandaise sauce but you use Greek yogurt instead of butter so and it's really bright really pops but you're not gonna have a, a coronary before you hit forty. What's your citrus? Uh, lemon. White. Oh, lemon. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Just yeah. So like um, the uh, Gordon Ramsay is uh, half or a stick of butter. But you, do you have to four. yell at the butter? You're fucking stupid butter. You call that butter you piece of? I'm sorry. Have you given up? Yeah. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Uh, God, I love twenty four hours. Uh, did you Did you see Gordon Ramsay on Hot Ones, by the way? Yeah. Oh my God, fantastic! Oh, yeah. And of course, like of course, he's got a very sensitive palate, so it's worse for him. See, I, I did love the Elton Brown one though, because Elton Brown. Well, like, Elton Brown's a baller. And, You're not gonna fuck with Elton Brown. No, yeah, you can't. You can't. I mean, obviously, you know, Gordon Ramsay is the man too, but. Well, I think Elton Brown. Elton Brown like breaks down the science. I think Gordon Ramsay is more of like a dynamic personality. I'm he's, not sure how good. Really of a, gets the emotion out of every yeah, moment. Yeah, it's good TV. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. But Elton oh. Brown's good science. He is. He's, you learn from Alton Brick. Okay. Yeah, I used to be uh, completely spice stupid, and that's like the biggest change for me yeah. in the last few years. Is yeah, I get this. I'm gonna cry mercy because I'm so goddamn hungry now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so well, let's go make eggs. Let's do, let's do some that. shameless plugs. Okay. The Sue Empire Podcast proudly presents this week's shameless plugs. Good transitions. Thank you. So, uh, Spencer, this is the part of the show where. Just boil it down to where could people follow you on social media? What URLs should they know? Where what's coming up? Spencer and it's S P E N C E R D O B S O N comedy dot com that will hook you up to everything. If you go to uh, and and there is a link. Uh, if you go to cartoons, there's a link to my YouTube for Clutch and uh, my YouTube for my stand up and my stand up cartoons. Uh, I'm I'm Spencer Dobson on Facebook. Uh, and Facebook and Instagram are my two main things. But if, again, if you go to my website, that will get you everywhere. Uh, and I'm also, if you're looking for somebody to do corporates, I am on gig masters. Ooh. So, okay. Um, let's see. Seth, any, anything you other, anything food related? Maybe you want to, I, I would like to shamelessly plug, uh, good eats, uh, 24 <laughs> hours, uh, to hon back, uh, um, hell's kitchen, uh, uh, Master Chef, Master Chef Junior, uh, the shit that the Oscars didn't film, but they still gave out during the commercials. What? Uh, it was a thing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I had some other things that I was actually gonna say. Um, but yeah. Uh, shamelessly plugging my fiance, uh, Melissa. Thanks for <laughs> teaching me. That's some so shit, wrong. and you gave me a uh, cheesecake that was uh, fan fucking tastic. Can I shamelessly plug Seth's horseball story too? I think that was a real bright spot of this podcast. Yeah, I think so. Give the queen wave for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Horseballs are a specialty. <laughs> Rob, what do you have? My my shameless pl- plug this week is uh, going to be food. I'm going to eat like a shit ton of food when I get out of here. I don't know what, but I'm going to eat something because. Jesus Christ, that last 30 minutes there was uh, 
Was that 30 minutes? Yeah. We we got into... It's like, this song is normally 30 minutes, but we got into a serious thing. Uh, <laughs> it, was that, that, it was the podcasting equivalent to that, so I just let it ride. All right. Uh, well, let's do a cooking show. Yeah. Dude. Dude. That'd be great. Uh, so, anyway, uh, my... Let's see. Uh, <laughs> other podcasts... All of them at thesueempire.com. Be sure to check out uh, Macabre Grimoire, The Dress Code, uh, Urban Indians, all of our great shows. Uh, we're going to start casting. By the time this comes out, very soon, I will be launching the full casting announcement for all the different parts in Edge Case, our audio drama uh, sci-fi anthology podcast that uh, building a lot of hype around it. We've had like 50 people apply to be the big spooky narrator. I am desperately trying to narrow that down because I have a holy shitload of talent on that. Uh, but there's still time because that, for that form does not close until the 22nd, so if you want to take a shot at it, uh, get get in there. Uh, but yeah, that's Edge Case. Uh, if you want to support all the crazy stuff we do here at the SueEmpire.com, you can always do that at Patreon.com slash Uh And a huge Patreon thank you to Matt Paulson for supporting the show. Uh... Spencer, thank you so much for coming on. This was a lot of fun. It always is. Thank you for having me. And DM me if you want a, a, a recipe for fofo. I will totally hook you up. I will Sounds slide awesome. in your DMs for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, again, if you need something to watch while you poop after you eat fofo, check out my cartoons. Nice. And uh, thank you, Seth, once again for being here. And thank you, listeners. We love you very much. And we will see you all next week. Bye. Peace out.